It's 8.30 at WMAL. Felix Grant on hand in the evening, Monday through Friday, beginning at 8 and continuing till 12 midnight. For anyone who has been listening to WMAL here in the evening for a number of years, it will come as no surprise at all that we have played over the past six or almost seven years a great measure of Brazilian music. I've mentioned many times that I honestly feel that some of the most interesting popular music being written in the world today is being written and is being played in Brazil. In a sense, it's, it's a kind of a shame that we can't hear even more of the music, but there's a problem, record companies so far away, and getting records here and so on like that, it does create something of a problem. So with that in mind is why I'm, I've been so pleased to be able to present Brazilian music. One of the great surprises I got a few years ago was one evening here, it was in July of 1960, a fellow who was on the air doing a thing not unlike myself in Rio by the name of Paulo Santos came into town and I asked him to visit me on the program and bring along some Brazilian records. He said he had some with him. I said, and the time is yours, play whatever you want. I just want to hear a representative Brazilian program. One of the artists he played just literally knocked me out. And I said, who is this fellow? It was a fellow named João Gilberto. How little I realized at that time that in a year I would be in Brazil, I would be in Rio, visit Juan at his house, listen to him play guitar, and then over the past few years, uh, through one thing or another, we've become rather good friends. And Juan is our guest in the studio tonight. Juan, desculpe, porque não falo bem português, mas Miss Yolanda is here tonight, uh, and she will translate for us. Welcome here to WMAL. Uh, this is the very first program you've done. See. Si. Yes. The very first one. Uh, when these records of yours first uh, were released in Brazil, when when é que seus discos saíram foram lançados no Brasil? In '58. In '58. In '58. Yeah. Now, what kind of reception? Did they get? Uh, qual foi a recepção que eles obtiveram? Mais ou menos. The, the, just uh, yes, kind of so-so, no, huh? Yes, yes, so-so. Well, something of the same kind of thing once in a while happens here with, with songs that are a little bit different because this was a, a different approach. What was one of the things, say, that was very different about what you were doing with now Bossa Nova as compared to what was being done before? O que, que havia de especialmente diferente nos seus discos em Bossa Nova comparado com o que se fazia antes em música? Dizer isso exatamente assim como uma fórmula é difícil, compreende? Mas... Não sei o que há mesmo que se houver. Ele diz que é muito difícil explicar para você em uma frase yes. tudo isso, mas... Uh, if there is something and uh, it's still <laughs> successful, <laughs> maybe it's this thing. Well, these songs, the thing that I notice particularly about these songs, and the things I genuinely like about them, is there is cer a certain gentleness about them. And this is a sort of the undercurrent of all the songs, whether you're singing a little song about a, a duck walking along the street, or whether it's a song about Corcovado, uh, such a, an imposing part of Rio, there's, there's such a gentleness and such an honesty about these songs. It's the thing I really love about them. He said that one thing that he really loves in this type of music is a thing gentle, a thing delicate, as there is, for example, in Corcovado, in music like that. Yes. Yes. Now, the songs they be before this, uh, Juan, uh, before this, uh, say before songs like you did, uh, O Pato, and so on like that, the, um, was, uh, were, was this being done at all this kind of music? Singing. Now, most people here, the reason I put it that way is most people here in the United States, when they think of a samba, they think of maybe Carmen Miranda or some, you know, very, very fiery kind of approach. But this was so different and it was so gentle. And I was wondering if how long this kind of thing had been underway. Ele queria saber disse que o que se sabia aqui de música brasileira era uma coisa inteiramente diferente. Sim. E ele queria saber há quanto tempo, mais ou menos, esse tipo de música que você faz já já existia no Brasil. Hum, deixa eu ver. Eu ficava cantando, né? Eu queria cantar assim, eu gostava de, da coisa assim, mas muita dificuldade. Ele disse que ele gostava de cantar assim, nesse modo, 
in his own Muito style. Tempo, portanto. And he used to do this for a long, long time, and always felt much difficulty to do this, mm -hmm. things, even in Brazil. Let's play just a little bit of this one-note samba, and this will this will serve to point up the kind of uh, kind of thing that we're talking about. I'm sure that most people listening here are f are familiar at this point with Jean Gilberto in the short space of just a few years. Here's a fellow living in Rio de Janeiro, recording in Rio de Janeiro, has become a rather well-known commodity because of this, this, uh, as I say, this gentle approach. Here's João with the one-note samba. Eis aqui este sambinha feito numa nota só Outras notas vão entrar, mas a base é uma só Esta outra é consequência do que acabo de dizer Como eu sou a consequência inevitável de você Quanta gente existe por aí que fala tanto e não diz nada Ou quase nada Já me utilizei de toda a escala no final, não sobrou nada Não deu em nada e voltei pra minha nota Como eu volto pra você Vou contar com a minha nota Como eu gosto de você E quem quer todas as notas Ré, mi, fá, sol, lá, si, dó Fica sempre sem nenhuma Fique numa nota só And this is the one note samba now, may I ask a few questions, Joan, about you? Say your your background. Although I know uh, you live in, uh, although you're living in New York these days, you're just visiting in Washington. But I know you live in Rio de Janeiro. Am I? This is correct. Sim. You, living in Rio, but you weren't born in Rio. Where Where were you born? Here, Bahia. In Bahia. Sim. And uh, and as a young man, did you? Uh, I mean, are you a self-taught guitar player, or did did you actually have formal training? Você tomou lições de violão para tocar assim ou você foi um autodidata? Não, não tomei lições, não. He learned by himself. By yourself? Yes. Well, you know, I've said that I think uh, every other person in Brazil... Mas diga. Every other person in Brazil plays guitar. <laughs> I sometimes think so. Ele às vezes pensa que todo mundo no Brasil também toca violão. Mas diga que eu vou tomar aulas agora, agora eu vou estudar. He says that now he's going to study guitar. He's going to study what? <laughs> guitar, to take lessons. Oh, you are? Oh, come on. This is, this is one thing that... Uh, I would say that uh, Gilberto doesn't have to do it all. As a matter of fact, I thought it was a very nice uh, gesture on your part in this one collection where you did the salute to Bonfa. This was a, a very nice gesture on, on his part, one guitar player, you know, saluting another. It isn't done often. Ele disse que foi um gesto muito bonito sua parte, fazer o abraço no Bonfa, que é uma coisa que não acontece muito, um guitarrista diz que é uma coisa ou outra. As a matter of fact, Luis Bonfa visited here in the studio one time. Mas Bonfá, Bonfá, me... senti que ele merecia uma, uma homenagem, assim. He felt that he must give this to Bonfá, that uh, he merecia. <laughs> he, I mean, he liked him that, he admired yes. his work that much that he felt he would do it. Well, it's an unusual thing, it's not done often, this is why I say it's a tribute. Por que Bonfá, um momento, por que Bonfá é um criador, sabe, ele criou uma... Um, aquele som de violão só ele tira, entende? Ou começou a tirar uma coisa assim. He says that Bonfá was the first one, first Brazilian guitarist that has done this kind of sound mm -hmm. that João likes and does. Ah, I see. Não é aquele som. Tem, tem, é tum, dum, mm -hmm. Nem os guitarristas clássicos têm esse negócio. Gentle sound Relaxa that even the classical guitarist doesn't have. Yes. Now he's marvelous, and of course the the work he did uh, for the picture of Black Orpheus is uh, is outstanding, and uh, people still love to hear you know the songs from this particular motion picture. Well, tell me, João, in uh, in in working in this particular album with One Note Sound and some of the others, one of the people that you work very closely with is uh, Jobim, Tom Jobim. Now, uh, most people regard him, I think, as a songwriter. But, and he is a very fine songwriter, but he's also a, a, an excellent pianist and also plays guitar as well. How did you two fellows first get together? Como é que você e o Tom se deram trabalhando juntos? Você disse que todo mundo conhece o Tom como compositor, mas que ele merece também ser citado como pianista. Sim. Tom é muito bom pianista, um grande músico. Muito bom. Muito... 
Se quiser ser, eu sei, dá, combino muito bem com ele. He said that Tom is a great musician and uh, they have a very nice time working together. It was a very good combination. Temperament, sonhos, entende? Coisa assim. Caráter assim da, da vida, das coisas, não sabe? They think the same things about life and everything. Well, one thing I noticed, particularly in this collection where Jobim is playing piano, the one that was recorded in New York, where it's, it's Jobim's album, the I could almost sense the, the kind of feeling that he has because in playing the songs he'll just play two or three little notes just here or there and it's, 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 there's a sparseness in it that's, that's interesting. It's, it's never overdressed and it's never overdone. And of course this is the kind of work this fellow, Gilberto here, does as well. So I can see how they would, would complement each other. Of course, uh, Jobim is from, he's from Rio, he's a carioca. Mm -hmm. And now there's one other individual, last year, uh, I had occasion to uh, to have a short chat with Vinicius de Moraes. And this is another of the interesting people in this area of music. Now, Vinicius is not a as young a man as uh, as Gilberto and uh, and Jobim, and, and yet he's uh, highly regarded in this area of music. Does he play at all an instrument? Vinicius toca algum instrumento? No, pega no violão, mas não. He has to do something with well, his guitar, but he doesn't play. Well, he's primarily, of course, a poet and writer. This is, uh, this is his claim to fame. So the combination of these three people, more or less working together, uh, created a, a brand of music that has become very, very popular. Sometimes I'm rather sorry that it became as popular as it did as immediately as it became popular, because something about it was either spoiled along the way and this is why I still prefer listening to the songs that were re recorded in Rio by Juan and some of the other people who work in this area. Ele disse que às vezes inclusive ele se sente um pouco feliz de ter visto a bossa nova ficar tão popular de uma hora para outra e tanta coisa ter sido feita aqui que ele ainda prefere ouvir os discos que vocês fizeram no Brasil naquele tempo. Obrigado. Our guest tonight, the man we're talking with, is João Gilberto, the guitarist and singer. We've had occasion to feature for many years. The fellow has become quite popular in the United States. His first record to be released in the U.S. came out in 1961, although it had been released two years earlier in Brazil. And this record has become popular enough so that it was just reissued this week. So the, uh, this is the same co uh, collection with the one note samba and meditation and, and so on like that. As a matter of fact, we'll have another little uh, uh, touch out of another of Juan's uh, albums here. Here's another song. <laughs> Se transformam depressa demais Quem no coração Abrigou a tristeza de ver Tudo isso se perder E na solidão Procurou um caminho e seguiu Já descrente de um dia feliz Que o seu pranto já secou Quem depois voltou Ao amor, ao sorriso e à flor Então tudo encontrou Pois a própria dor Revelou o caminho do amor E a tristeza acabou And of course, this is another of the songs in the first collection of Jean Gilberto's that was released here in the United States. Uh, how long have you lived in Rio, Jean? How, or should I say, how old were you when you came from Bahia to uh, to Rio de Janeiro? 
E quantos anos você tinha quando você foi da Bahia para o Rio? Hum. Ele era um jovem. 20 anos. Ele era about 20. 19, 20. Oh, exatamente. 19, 20. E depois, quando arriving in, in Rio e playing uh, guitar, uh, You got mixed up in the working in clubs in, in Rio, São Paulo, I suppose. Quando você chegou no, no Rio tocando violão, você começou logo a trabalhar em clubes no Rio e em São Paulo? No, na rádio Tupi. He was working on the radio. On the radio. Um grupo vocal, um When conjunto uh, vocal, Garotos da Lua. As a vocal group. A singer and group. vocal group. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, and this was a regular radio program heard in Rio. Era um, um programa regular de rádio ouvido no Rio? Era o quê? Um programa de rádio re ouvido regularmente ou você fazia uma vez ou outra? Não, toda semana tinha esse programa, mas eles cantam... Sim, toda semana tinha esse programa. Yes, he used to do that each week. Well, then, did you start to work, uh, work professionally in clubs then, later? Was this the next thing? E Como? foi depois disso que você começou a trabalhar profissionalmente em clubes? Mas depois disso teve muita coisa. Aí, porque eu não tocava violão, não, no conjunto. O conjunto cantava com orquestra. Não, muitas coisas aconteceram depois disso. Ele não tinha tocado guitarra ainda. Ele was só cantando nesse grupo, com uma orquestra. Comecei, comecei a, a tocar mais violão e a gostar de cantar sozinho. E, e comecei a querer a encontrar um negócio que eu queria. And after he began to play more and more guitar and to like to sing all alone and try to find something that he really wanted to find. Estudei um pouquinho de... Um pouquinho. And he studied a little. Some, some, yes. Well, I was curious, my point in asking, I was curious about how he had come about working in clubs in, uh, in Rio, you know, to the extent that someone says, well, we want to record this man. This is what I was trying to find out. Ah, ele quer saber como é que foi, que, quando é que você começou a trabalhar em clubes e tudo isso, como é que você chegou a ser notado para fazer gravação e tudo isso? Ah, para fazer gravação foi uma dificuldade, pois a, uma, a companhia se reuniu, porque eu também me recusava a fazer o que eles queriam, assim, de um tal teste para... Não adianta nada porque teste para quem. Aí era um negócio assim. Até que eu gravei um disco assim particular e a Luiz de Oliveira levou e mostrou a companhia, a companhia se reuniu e chamou. Isso era bom você traduzir que tem muita coisa. Que, que e, e, com, chamou o vendedor da fábrica perguntar se acha que esse disco vende, não sei o que. E foi assim que eles fizeram uma experiência. Ele diz, é uma história muito curta. Foi muito difícil fazer um record, porque as pessoas queriam que ele fizesse coisas que ele não queria fazer. E então, muitas vezes, ele recusou de fazer testes, porque ele sabia que as pessoas não gostariam desse tipo de coisas. E uma vez, o Aloysio de Oliveira, uh, once, uh, Aloysio de Oliveira uh -huh made a reunion on the Odeon to discuss, uh, discuss about his record. And, and uh, it was like that, that he did his first record with much Chamar difficulty. Oh, yeah. They asked everybody to accompany it. Agora, quem Should fez a possible. grande força foi Jobim, Antônio Carlos Jobim. And uh, he says that Jobim is one of the res responsible. I see. For Ele, this well, I know first when, when record. triste porque ninguém queria nada. Well, I know when we spoke in Rio two years ago, or 1961, uh, we had talked about this, and I learned at the time I could sense that, uh, that Joan was a, a perfectionist in, in what he wanted to do. I could sense we sat and chatted for, oh, about an hour, and I knew that there was a certain perfection that he insisted on, and making records is not an easy thing for him. This, I've even mentioned this on the program, because I know he's not the kind of individual who goes into a studio and just makes a record and runs out. Proof of this is the fact that in the past four years there are only about four albums, for four or five years. So this isn't the kind of thing just running in, making a record, and running out again, and this sort of thing. This is the one thing that he does not do. Joan came to the United States to appear at Carnegie Hall back in 1962, and then uh, he appeared here in Washington D.C. Uh, in a show that was held at Lister Auditorium in December of 1962. Up until very recently, uh, he's been doing some touring, 
uh, did some work with Stan Getz for a while, moving in and around the country. I believe he appeared in Montreal. Uh, is that is that correct, Jean? Você trabalhou com Stan Getz e teve algum tempo em Montreal, não? Foi. And then before that, you had you spent a number of months in Italy. E antes disso você teve vários meses na Itália. Foi e na França. In Itália, France, France too. Tell me, do, uh, the audiences, and you would sing again, Corcovado and Aspes da Cruz and so on. The audiences in Italy, in which country did they seem to enjoy your work best? Em que país você acha que as pessoas, que a audiência gosta mais da da sua apresentação? Aqui nos Estados Unidos. Agora na Itália. In United States. Na Itália, eu, os italianos tinham muito boa vontade, mas eu não tinha uma boa performance naquele tempo. Eu estava doente, não podia. E eles reconheciam que não estava o um negócio direito. Aí eles não gostavam muito. He says that in Italy people were very nice with him, but he feels that uh, he was not playing very well because of his physical conditions, mm -hmm. that you know. And so they say that maybe people recognize it, that he was not playing well, and so they couldn't like it very well. I see. They're talking about this physical condition, Joan has had a, a sore shoulder for for a number of months and has been taking treatments on us. This is the kind of thing that is just difficult to to overcome and it's a, it's a case of treatments and this is what the reference was to a physical condition. Well, Joan, I'm elated you're in Washington. I, I can't think of anyone I'd rather see visiting here in Washington. I say I'm very happy that he's here. Eles estão muito contentes de você estar aqui. Ah, eu também. Me too. Because, uh, because what, what this fellow does is a very special uh, kind of singing and playing. Uh, not many people are the perfectionists that, that he happens to be. Uh, not many people have the, the control of what he really wants to do himself. He knows how he wants to sing these songs. The songs, as I said, are, have a great kindness and gentleness. And uh, actually, this is a, a great part of the fellow's makeup himself. Not long ago, Miles Davis remarked uh, when talking about uh, our guest here tonight, Jean Gilberto, he said he can read the newspaper and make it sound good. I don't know did, if you all saw that. Did he say yes. so he can read the newspaper and make it sound good, which is a tremendous compliment. And I felt quite pleased to be with Joan to introduce him to Miles Davis. Back uh, in 1962, we went down uh, down to the Vanguard one night back then. We wanted to go and see Miles, uh, and so, and yeah, so we introduced him to Miles. So uh, it, it, was a, it was a very, very pleasant evening. Joan, it's very nice you're in town at the showboat. I uh, wish you the best success in the world. I'm sure that uh, you're no stranger at all to the people here in Washington, D.C., uh, not only through this program, but through the various other people on the, on the radio here at NAL and other stations in town who, who like what he does, and uh, so now we're not alone here at WMAL. Thank you very much again for coming by. Muito obrigado. No, muito obrigado você. Thank you. No, braço and everything else that goes along with it. I'm just sorry that I can't uh, immediately say when I might possibly get back to... Uh, Back to uh, uh, Brazil, João. Uh, it seems to me right now like it might be a long time off, and that's that. That gives me uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Diga, diga o que é isso. Diga. Ele só gostaria de saber quando é que ele vai poder voltar de novo para o Brasil. Ah, eu quero que você vá lá. He wants him very much to go back. Tem que ir à Bahia para poder entender o negócio. You must go to Bahia. João's very disturbed that I didn't get to Bahia. It's like trying to come to the United States and see the United States in three weeks. You know, you have to you have to plan that you'll see this and you'll see that. One day, next time, there are two places I want to go to. When I arrive in Rio, spend some time in Cabo Frio, and spend some time in Bahia. So is that okay? Boa. Okay, and that's all the time we have tonight. Thank you very much for coming by. I hope it's not long before you're back in Washington, D.C. Let me ask one other question. Is he going to be touring in the United States now? Você vai começar a viajar para os Estados Unidos agora? Uh, acho que sim. Good. We'll keep in touch with you that sim. way and, and, uh, and tell everybody where you're appearing. Thank you again, Correct. John. And thank you, our, our translator tonight, Miss Diolanda. And, of course, the conversation is in Portuguese, which is the language of Brazil. As a matter of fact, more than 50% of the people in South America speak this language. It's very important. It's a very pretty language. Gosto bem. <laughs> <laughs> WMAL Radio 63 in Washington, D.C.